Hi, PCTI STEMers. It's, it's been a while with uh, testing and spring break and ending another unit and, and transitioning to this one. But as anticipated, we're finally back um, to some videos. And this is the first one for unit six. So unit six is the beginning is the industrial revolution and then the end is imperialism. So we've already discussed the industrial revolution a little bit. Um, with our reading of hard times, with our um, activity from the IEEE um, REACH program. Um, but we're gonna go over some of the causes of the Industrial Revolution today. So we've already discussed revolutions in general. Revolution is when there's a big change. So like the scientific revolution changed how people um, viewed the world. Um, political revolutions like in France and Haiti in Latin America. This revolution was different because this changed material life um, and it affects our life today in many ways because this revolution is about stuff, um, how stuff is made, how much stuff you have, where your stuff is from, um, what your stuff costs. And it's more than just stuff. But if you think about stuff, um, we'll be at a good starting point. So a little backup. Before this, there was an agricultural revolution, so another change, a change the way crops are produced and where how our food was made and where our food came from. There's actually several agricultural revolutions in history, but I just realized that prior to the Industrial Revolution, there was a change in crops and um, your food products. And it began with new crop rotations. So think of if a farmer had a field, or, or say so many fields, and he always grew potatoes in this field and wheat in this field and whatever in this field, eventually growing that same crop there drains that soil of nutrients and then it becomes really hard to grow that crop continually in the future. So they realized if you every season rotate it, so one year you grow wheat there, as this um, diagram shows, one year you grow beans there, one year you leave it blank, uh, you know, just, just let it rest that actually yields much better um, crop production. So that was part of it. Also, you have new technologies happening, um, like the seed drill. So you didn't have to like plant every seed by hand. Um, so you can then plant more crops. Um, also, you then get more animals um, because there's more food. So food isn't just necessary for people, it's necessary for animals, right? And if you have more animals, more animals make more manure right? And more manure means you can fertilize those crops better. So that in turn means more food for people to eat. So, you know, we rely on manure, uh, whether you want to believe it or not. So um, this cycle continues. You continue to get more food, you continue to get more animals, and this has a lot of different results. All right. Also, you're getting bigger animals. Um, it's not so much for over selective breeding, though that was part of it. Um, a lot of it was just because they now had more food um, and more healthier food to eat from as well. Um, so if you have bigger animals, um, you can have more food to eat. I was actually doing some research. Um, I did research a few years ago on this, and I just had to remember where it was, about how much animals grew. Um, and I can tell you some of that, but like how much, like how like pigs were growing by like 70% and all this stuff. Here's an example. Um, calves born. Um, in England in 1710 were about 50 pounds. 1785, they were about 148 pounds. So it's almost tripling in size. Um, sheep in 1710 were about 28 pounds. It's hard to think of a sheep that small, right? By 1790, they were about 80 pounds, right? So um, think of that as now that's more food for people to eat if the animals are bigger, right? Because they were growing and growing and growing. Right. Um, this has some society changes. As there's more technology like the seed drill and other inventions on the farm, this makes more food. But also, less people is now needed on the farm because you need people to plant things by hand. You didn't need, didn't need people to harvest by hand. You now had machines replicating some of this work. So you need less farmers. So what do you what do you what happens, right? These people can now do other things besides farm. They could be artisans. They could work in factories, right? They could do all sorts of things. They weren't just like going out having a good time, right? They still had to make a living. 
Um, so now you have more food, which means more people because you have more food to feed people. And also people now start having healthier diets, which means they aren't dying off from disease as much. That's a good thing, right? Also means they're living longer. Um, also means more children um, survive infancy, which didn't have good rates for a long period of time. So here's an example. If you take all of Europe, in 1700, there were somewhere between 100 and 120 million people. Just 100 years later, it's 190 million people. Not quite doubling, but almost, okay? In England, 1750, there's 6 million people. By 1800, just 50 years later, there's 10 million people, All right? Think of all of a sudden, your entire population almost doubles, it seems overnight, right? Next year, there's gonna be about twice as many kids in the STEM building. That's gonna be a big difference, right? So think about when that happens next year. Well, what are you gonna do about the bathrooms being more crowded and the cafeteria being more crowded, right? So think of society. What do you do when all these people, like where are they gonna go, right? You're just gonna fit them in the homes? You have to build new homes? Where are they gonna work, right? So all these societal changes happen as a result of this, because you know you, you can't just do, make these changes overnight. So society changes, because now people are moving from the farms to the cities. Well, we don't need work on the farm, so let's find work in the cities. Now, there weren't really skyscrapers yet, but you get the idea. Um, so what do the cities do when all these people start coming in? Can they handle that, right? Um, can they handle more people? More people often means more disease and uh, more waste, right? So eventually we're going to talk about these effects, but start thinking, you know, what's going to happen here? Something else to keep in mind, England was once covered with forests, um, but it was used and for, you know, all sorts of things, building, for energy. Um, but by the 1700s, almost all the trees were gone in England. So what are they going to do? They needed to find a new form of energy. That energy would come in coal, okay? Um, coal um, can be burnt and used with water uh, to make steam power. And steam power is used um, for machinery, um, for transportation, whether it's by steamboat or railroad. And we'll get into that. But so now what do you do? You need to obtain this coal somehow. But um, it was difficult to get coal, right? It's underground. How are you going to get that? It's also expensive to get because now you have to like find a way to get underground and get this coal. Um, Things to think about what else was going on in England at the time. At this moment, it was a stable government. The civil war is there. The glorious revolution was over. Um, so people were like, all right, we're, we're chill now. We, we're, we're okay with the government. The government also didn't interfere with the economy, which means they weren't interfering with businesses, right? If a business wanted to um, have 100 people work in a small room to make something, go for it. If a business wanted to send small kids into a mine to get coal, go for it. So while there may have been a lot of um, economic advantages to that, eventually that causes some um, societal disadvantages, which we'll get to. Uh, so let's think of some economic causes. People now had surplus money. It used to be they spent their money on like their food and like their rent or whatever they needed to live. And that was about it. You didn't have money to, you know, think of all this extra stuff we buy today. Do you really need those extra pair of shoes? Um, do you really need air buds or whatever those things are called, right? So they, they now had money to spend on more stuff. Um, we also had free trade going on where people were um, not being like taxed to bring their goods to market. So that means there was more um, business going on. And which we'll get to with imperialism, but we've already discussed a little bit already, England had a lot of colonies. So that means there's people they could sell their stuff to. There's places you could get raw materials from to make more stuff to sell to other people, right? So you had this network of trade going on. And they have capital. Capital means you have money to invest in your business. So if a company makes, you know, an extra $100, they can take the $100 and buy a new machine to make more stuff, to make more money, and you, know, can, you can keep increasing your revenue. Um, I could talk about some more examples of capital. Um, if you're a sports fan, we can, we can discuss examples of that you may be able to relate to. All right, so um, think about how is society going to keep up with all of these changes? Um, what changes are going to have to be made? Uh, with more people in the cities, with more goods from all these places, um, how to obtain coal, and what effects does coal mining have on society and the environment. Um, see if you can connect this to hard times, um, to anything we've done in class today. 
um, when we read the jungle, um, even to our experiment with the uh, refrigeration. All right, and we'll go over this next class. If you have any questions, please let me know.